Hey everybody, welcome back to Shades of Color and Light. I'm Anne, and today I'll be working on a butterfly mandala. I've chosen this sheet from Colorful Creations Butterfly Mandalas, and that's by Jess Falinski. I love her books. And today I wanted to do something a little bit different, so I'm gonna be using some Prismacolor ink base pens. More markers. These are brush. This is a brush. If you can see this edge here, when we apply it to the paper, it has a very brush like tip. And then we've got another side to that, which is more of a fine tip marker. And so I wanted to do something different. I bought these a while back and have never used them. So I wanted to give them a try. Let's kind of see how this goes here. I may fill in a little bit later with some colored pencils. That's why you notice on these circles I'm not just coloring a full coloring circle. I'm going to use a little bit of a different yellow a little bit later so we can get some texture added to these dots or circles. Almost look like small pearls. And today I've chosen a color palette. I started off by choosing, I've got five colors. I'll just go ahead and I'll show you that right now before we get along too far here. I find when I'm coloring my mandalas that choosing a color palette ahead of time makes me happy. Uh, I've got started in many different mandalas and because of the repetitiveness of such, you know, these circles are repeated, the leaves are repeated, the flowers are repeated. When there's such repetition inside a coloring page, I find that I do much better when choosing my color palette ahead of time. I've had some situations where I started just using colors as I pulled them out and halfway through discovered that I really didn't like the look of it, that some of the colors didn't match. And as you get into color theory and different things like that, you'll find that certain colors do look better next to certain colors. So this is the color palette I've chosen. A yellow, a darker pinkish orange, an orange, a complementary pink, and then a green. So we're going to see how well these work together. But next thing I want to do is, I want to color, I think I want to color these small circles with this yellow. Just get started with that going all the way around. And as I find the small yellow circles, I'll just color portions of them because I'm going to use colored pencils also to add some texture. I hope all of you watched my last video. I did a flip through of Creative Haven's Country Christmas. And one of the tips I gave you in there is to also always photocopy your coloring page first. Now when I mention that, we're not going to obviously distribute that coloring page and use it inappropriately for sale or anything. But we are going to copy that coloring page just in case something happens and we get started and we really don't like what we're seeing so far and we want to start over. There's nothing wrong with that. Another reason why you might photocopy it is sometimes my girls and I have a coloring contest and obviously there's three of us, we need three pages and so each of us gets a page. And that way we're kind of focused on coloring the same thing and I love it because you can definitely see uh, the differences in each of our coloring. And let's see, I'm going to get started on the screen. And I'm going to just add some extra lines with the fine point side. Okay, just want to give that. And then on that side, I am going to use... A lighter shade of coloring pencil but I just want to give these leaves just a little bit of texture here. Yeah. 
and I want each one to look somewhat individual. So, some will get more lines than others. I don't know about you, but I really find coloring mandalas to be a peaceful experience. Coloring in general, I find to be very relaxing. But there's something about the mandalas, I believe it is because of the repetitive, repetitiveness of the shapes that makes coloring them very peaceful. Okay, and then I think what I'm going to do here is just color in these lines. I already love that yellow. Of course yellow is my favorite color. It's been my favorite color my entire life. When I was younger and living at home, there was one time that our parents let us each choose some of the decorations for our bedroom. They were going to remodel the bedrooms. And um, we were allowed to choose a paint color. At least I was in my room. I'm not, I can't speak for my siblings, but I was allowed to choose a paint color for my walls and carpeting. And um, of course I chose yellow walls and yellow carpeting. And uh, kind of a funny story is I was uh, not a very neat person when I was younger let's say going through my teen years so my mom would just close my bedroom door and I should probably take a cue from her sometimes uh, sometimes that's just the best thing to do is just kind of close the door and um, just kind of take it out of your sight for a little bit but choose to close my door because it was so messy but even with a closed door when you looked underneath that little crack at the bottom of the door because I had the yellow carpeting and everything inside it was so bright it used to look like I had a light on even when I didn't now of course I kind of grew out of that phase I think I'm going to take this leaf now and color in this side of it. It's kind of solid here. Balance it, I'll color this side. And then around that flower, I think that's going to give that a nice balancing effect. Do this one. Let's go opposites here. Maybe that's why it's so peaceful to do mandalas. You know, I was talking about being the shapes being repetitive, but what you're trying to do when you're coloring these is harmonize. You're harmonizing and you're balancing color and maybe while you're doing that maybe subconsciously your brain is balancing some things in your life that might be out of balance Choose any colors that you like that today you feel are speaking to you that you would like to use. It's not necessarily about how others may view what we've done as far as coloring. It's more about 
you and what is making you more relaxed and more peaceful and what is it that is making you happy about coloring I'll try and include a snapshot of this coloring book um, because I think you'd really enjoy this one of the things that this author does maybe I'll just kind of put this into the picture really quick one of the things that this author does in the very beginning of the book that you may enjoy, her name is Jess Felinski, is she gives you quite a bit of color theory. She talks about light, value, form, texture, color, and again she's talking about dark and light value, how you create that. She gives you colors that would produce certain emotions gives you an idea of colors that you might choose together. She'll show you color wheel, explain a little bit about the color wheel, gives you lots of samples of drawings. Sometimes I like that, sometimes I don't. Um, but then the, the thing I wanted to show you was here, on the first couple of pages, this is perforated right here, so that when you do color it, you're not going to have this, you know, on, on your um, finished work. But she does show you how to use color, what sample colors you might use, and then you can take your own pens and you can add in your own color palette of something that you like. Not every page is like that. And we get over, let's see over here, let me see. Let's see, that's the first 25 pages. You get to page 27, then you start one without that. Now I know a lot of people like to color page by page in their coloring books. Someone might buy a coloring book like that and they might color the entire book. That's not for me. I've never um, wanted to do that before because I just don't necessarily want to color each and every picture in a coloring book. There's just some of the pictures that I really just love and they kind of, you know, um, if you want to say they just kind of speak to me, I kind of crack up at that. I think that's something my mom used to say that we used to kind of laugh about as kids, but you know, you're just attracted to certain pictures in books. So I like to tear mine out and put them on a board like this and color them individually. But I know for those of you that like to color page by page, it's definitely a sense of accomplishment once you've colored an entire book, you know, and then you can look back at that book and you can think about your successes and the things that you would do differently. And you can probably see your growth as an artist. And so there is something said for coloring a whole book like that. Now, I see I got myself into trouble here because I didn't space out my petals. And uh, I would have had three orange ones right next to each other. So what I decided to do was go orange, two spaces white, orange, one space, orange, and then the two spaces over here. And I kind of feel visually that almost balances out better than if I would have gone every other and then been stuck with the three oranges right next to each other. So I'm actually going to, let's see, let's count. One, two, three, and let's start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 12, 13, 14. Let's see if each one, let me start this one here, give me a reference to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, 
So I think on each of these flowers, I will have two spots that have two petals that are white. And let's see if that just doesn't look cohesive throughout the entire page. Let's go with this one. I wouldn't worry about if some of the color bleeds in here. Um, eventually, I think when you color over that with another color, I think that it'll just, in a way, add something to it. It will look more like a shading. I remember a while back, I was watching a video, a coloring video, and the, the person narrating it whose YouTube channel it was, he happened to mention something about staying within the lines, that once you're an adult, you should be able to stay within the lines, or something like that. I don't really think he meant anything negative by it, but boy, oh boy, the negative comments that he got from that was really crazy. Um, but I suppose as YouTuber, even negative comments our wanted comments because a lot of times people watch the videos and um, you don't receive any comments and that's something that we like in the YouTube world we like on Facebook and so forth we like people to comment on what we're doing and get active in the communicating process so we know what people like and what they don't. So I think I'm pretty safe to say don't worry about if you get out of the lines at all. It really won't make a big difference when you, once your picture's done. And this brush is really, really nice to work with. Uh, much better than a paintbrush where the bristles would be splitting and separating on you but it's giving very very beautiful color pure tones of color and it's fairly easy to work with I really wasn't sure what to expect I was also wasn't sure about odor from this pen and um, I can smell a little but not really a lot that it would bother me like um, if I was using a sharpie I think I'd be a lot more bothered by the scent so there's really uh, very low to no odor with this right now And if the odor would bother you, I would just say, try opening a window. Now I suppose what I could do, I'll show you that, you know what, I'll do it on another. The other thing I do with my coloring sheets, what I have found over time, is that I take the corners down to my sheet as I'm coloring. What I found is that most 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 of my coloring sheets with colored pencils take 
two to three hours to color. And by the time I'm getting down to the two or three hours, I find that my edges just, they start to curl. And then I can't keep my page flat. Now on some of the pages, you've got a design work that, that goes right up to the edge. And so when you're coloring those, you have to be careful or you'll get, you know, you'll get the mark from the tape underneath it. Uh, but it makes for a much more pleasant experience that you don't have to stop your work. You just know that you've got it, you've got it in there. Okay, now what I was going to say was, what I could be doing is, okay, now I could do something like that and then come through with either another marker color, maybe the orange, or I could come through with the colored pencil, and then I would just get an extra shading look there. Now today, I think I just like the look of this solid color. I think I was going to do the pink in a different spot, but um, I guess I'll do all these others pink. brush strokes. There's many of the satisfying videos that are out with those sounds. And that in itself can be calming to listen to. bit of a different feel than that orange did. I think I'm able to get some of the lighter areas. The orange just laid on such a thick strip of color, I couldn't really do that. Not this pink here. I'm able to get some different, different texture to it. Maybe it's just 
the paint feels dry or something, not quite as deep and rich, but I think when I'm done with the end of this, I think I'm going to end up liking the way that that looks. that you can color right over right here you just color right over where you where, where I colored a little bit like right here when you color over with the next color you really don't notice that flower. Let's get that one done. little bit darker than I thought it would be. I'm going to add in the orange, the lighter orange right in here and I'm just going to do uh, every one of these. Yep, just as I thought when you overrun with a little bit of color it just looks like an additional, kind of like you meant to do it with a little bit of shading there. these pens for a long time. Just needed the right project to do that. Never be afraid to experiment with medium that you've never used before. And by medium I just mean whether it be pencils, watercolored pencils, ink pens, um, seeing artists online using highlighter pens. They're using them in a very similar way to these particular pens. I believe they're alcohol-based pens too. And they're using them to lay color down like this. And then they are using the colored pencils over top and gaining, what they're gaining is, is uh, this kind of color wash 
underneath the colored pencils and they're getting different colors, different textures, just by having these underneath. And, um, and then they're also experimenting the opposite way of using colored pencils and then using these ink-based pens, these alcohol ink-based pens over top. And that's kind of what you do in art is through an experimentation product process, new things are developed. new ideas, new way of coloring, and it also gives you, by experimenting, gives you ideas on what you like and what you don't like. Maybe you find out you really don't like <laughs> to use this medium. Now, what I'm going to do is, let's see, I think I'm going to get some of this orange in here for my butterfly. Well, I've got the orange pen open. Lately, I've been reading a lot about the Impressionist painters and Impressionism in general and what that actually meant in their day which many of them now that we call geniuses and master master painters masterpieces that they painted that are in museums and so forth they were laughed at in their day and made fun of because they were doing something totally different most of the painters of their day this is in France this was a group of French painters they were painting uh, with black mainly they were using pigment over pigment and using layer and layer upon layer of paint to create the look that they wanted and they did all their painting in studio they did not go out outside and paint there were reasons for that but the bottom line was when the impressionists decided that they wanted to do something different they were mocked and laughed at for doing what they did. One of the things that they wanted to do was get outside and they wanted to create paintings that showed you the moment, how the moment felt. So they loved going outside if you see Monet painting of his haystacks and he's got them in so many different in different lights morning light evening light noon light he was a master at painting shadows and and they loved the play of light upon things but one thing that you might find interesting is at the, in their day was they did not have paints in tubes yet. That was yet to be invented and in fact in their day it was invented. And because the paint was placed into these tin tubes then they could go outside as they wished and take their paints with them. But prior to that that's kind of why they painted indoors was they didn't have their paints in anything that they could carry and they also had apprentices mixing their paints so today you know we can be very thankful that we can buy all the paints that we want and um, we're not really stopped by or hindered by not having the things that we want, where we want them, when we want them. But in their day, uh, that was quite a new invention to have the paints uh, being able to be mixed and be in the tins that they could then carry with them wherever they went.
Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm kind of enjoying some of the white space that's in this picture, like in the butterflies. I'm not sure I'm going to add more color. enjoying a lot of the white space in this drawing and I'm not sure that I want to color it off. So I'm gonna take a little look here. Just a touch. Go for the fine tip point here, and I'm going to add some dots. And look how cheerful that made that. Um, that's what I think I'm going to do. Let's just see here. We put a dot in the middle. Those flowers. And okay, I'm not going to dot it all the way around. That's about halfway. I really feel like sometimes adding these little tiny elements and let's take our green let's go to the fine tip on the green and let's just see what we might do there we go I like that I guess I do. Let me do these. You don't want your painting to look half done, but on the other hand, if you, like myself, just enjoyed looking at that white space, then that's something that you ought to do. Is just keep it simple. and say it's finished. I love it. And I really loved being with you today. I hope you enjoyed the show today. If you like my channel, go ahead and subscribe. I love to see new subscribers. Give me a likes, a like, a thumbs up. As my daughter would say, smash that thumbs up button. And I will see you next time. Have a great day.